here with the Raiders GM, Dave Ziegler, and of course I do all the research on your background. Everybody knows you went to John Carroll University with Josh McDaniels, very well reported. But then I started looking at the list of other GMs, front office execs, coaches that came out of there. Tom Telasco, Brandon Staley, Greg Roman, London Fletcher. What, what is in the water at John Carroll? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, it's only 3,500 people go to that school. That's right. That's crazy. Well, London was the only one that was talented enough to actually play football. <laughs> Um, after, when you hold records. After John Carroll. I had, I had my moment in the sun while I was there. <laughs> I wasn't good enough to play after that. But I think like Division three football in general, what you find is a lot of, you're not getting a scholarship, so it's a lot of guys that love football. And, and it's a lot of guys that I think that, you know, again, they weren't the Division one level player, and so they had to work, you know, put in a lot of effort to become whatever type of player they were. And I think when you put that into kind of together and you have people that are really passionate about football, that are hardworking, um, that had a level of success in college, and there's a dependability factor there. You have three things that um, you know allow f of, of, uh, to have a foundation to be successful in football, and of course, connections help too. Yeah. And and so there's this you know this pipeline and network that has developed that's just crazy, like you said. And so um, you know you you want a lot of people, obviously a known commodity, someone that they know what they're cut from and how they work, and it's. Obviously, it's benefited a lot of us. Yeah, every John Carroll graduate now calls up, hey, I want to be the GM. How do I do that? Exactly. <laughs> it's not an easy path. Um, you and Josh were not just college teammates, roommates. Uh, he gave you your start as a scout in the NFL with the Denver Broncos back in 2010. And here we are, 13 years, three Super Bowls with the Patriots together. And now together, you get to lead one of the most storied franchises in NFL history. You know him as a man, not just a coach. You knew him way before all of this. Tell me something about Josh McDaniels that we can tell Raiders fans that would make them continue to trust in him as a person and his vision with the Raiders. Yeah, I think it's a good question because I think there was, a lot, you know, when his time in Denver, when he was 32 years old, there was a lot of, um, you know, different narratives out of Denver when he was there. And, and, and again, this is 12 years later. Uh, we all grow and, and change over that time. But um, I think that the, the one thing about Josh is just how caring he is and empathetic he is. And, and to, to the players and to staff, um, if there's an issue that comes up, whether it's um, something you have to handle off the field or a, a question you may have about what, why we're doing something a certain way, like Josh's door is always open. And Josh will, is open to taking constructive criticism, to taking feedback, to looking at different perspectives, and just in generally caring about people, I think, and and I think those the combination of those those things along with how competitive he is, um, that's why you have players like Devontae Adams and Max Crosby and, and Josh Jacobs and you know these some guys that are that perform at a high level that you can see that instant bond um, that they have with Josh. Um, again, not only because of the the, the competitive piece, but that there's this uh, compassionate side where he's build, building relationships with people and he's creating buy-in that way. And that's why we haven't had one of the, uh, I, I wouldn't say we've had a season that we are proud of up to this point in terms of the record. Um, but I just came out from practice and you would you know, think this team's getting ready to uh, you know, compete for the playoffs right now because of the energy and the buy-in. And again, that's a foundational piece you need to have in place to have any type of success in this league. And, and Josh brings that to this team. So you guys start out together. Here you go, 10 weeks into the season, your first season as the Raiders, and, and you're sitting at two and seven. And the national media, everyone is calling for someone's head. Somebody needs to do something. And as a first-time GM, you have this long-term plan. It's, it's the long haul for you when you come in. How difficult was it for you to not second guess your approach and stay the course which you ultimately did? I would be lying if you don't question those things. And I think it's healthy to question those things too, um, to, to make sure that you are grounded in your approach and to look at things critically and make sure that you've made the right decisions and the, the things that we believe in and, and the reason that we're, we've made these decisions are these the things that we're gonna stand on. And those get tested when you're, when you're two and seven. And, and sometimes if you're seven and two, there may be some flaws, but they just get masked. And so um, it was a really important time for us, I think in the, in the long range and the big picture of, of us building um, this franchise into a, a sustained winner that we want to because we looked at those things and we critically looked at them and we and we questioned them and at the end of the day we felt like you know what we stand on and what we believe in um, we're going to stick with it we're going to we're going to um, stick with the approach and stick with our core beliefs and and again when those things get tested um, you have uh, you have to if you're going to if you're going to stick with them you have to stand stand by them at that point and that's what we decided to do. And Mark Davis was instrumental in kind of quieting the noise that week that was after the Colts' loss. Um, how 
did you interpret his public unwavering support of Josh McDaniels and what was happening? Yeah, I think Mark, you know, Mark made a decision I, almost a year ago here, we're closing in on a year of, of Josh and I being here, that, you know, he, he hired Josh and myself because he believed in our vision that we presented through the interview process. And that vision uh, wasn't to um, necessarily, um, you know, it would have been great to go to the Super Bowl this year, but that vision, we didn't go in there and say we we're gonna win the Super Bowl this year. I mean, we had a vision that we're gonna build something that uh, sustains over, over the long term. And just to see Mark reiterate the the fact, um, like you said, when you're two and seven and you're losing, um, you can shift your beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's a natural thing to do. And for Mark to stand um, to stand firm on on his belief in us and his belief in Josh was, I think, um, was uh, just gave us more confidence. You know, to continue to do what we're doing and and to continue to follow the plan that we we laid out. You know, a year ago. We all know how organizations work. Who to play is Josh's decision. That's a coach's decision. Um, but when you decide not to play Derek Carr, a franchise quarterback for nine years, the last two weeks of the season, that's a big organizational decision. I know for you guys it, it wasn't easy and probably a little emotional. But how does that move ultimately put the Raiders in a better position for success moving forward? Yeah, well, we all know the quarterback's the most important, you know, position on the team. And, and like you said, it was a difficult decision, and there is emotion involved in that. And um, but you you also have to make tough decisions in this business. And so an opportunity for us with two two games to go, um, with where our record was at at the time, and to to get an opportunity to look at two young quarterbacks and and Jarrett and in Chase, and to have them kind of have to step up and roll and step up in responsibility and um, step up in terms of the leadership aspect of the team. It's, it's really invaluable for us to see, uh, get a true evaluation of everybody in that room at the most important position in football um, to, to, make, to make sure that we understood exactly what we have going forward or questions or, or question what we have and, and make some decisions um, how to solidify that room going forward. And, and this was an opportunity for us to do that. Raiders two of five on third down. Stidham's in an empty set, third and four. 10.40 to go in the third quarter. Raiders up a field goal. Two on the play clock. They get the snap. They only bring four. Stidham in the pocket. Gets out of there. Eyes downfield. Flag flies. He's drilled as he throws. Open Adams at the 35. Racing to the 20. 10. Touchdown, Raiders. I'll tell you, against the 49ers, Jared Stidham, he moved that offense very freely against, mind you, the number one defense in the NFL at the time. It shocked us. A lot of us weren't expecting. I'm sure it didn't shock you. That's why you went out and got him. Could he be a starting quarterback yeah. in this league? I think well, to, I think the first thing, too, is is I've been around Jarrett for a long time um, since he came into the league when he was in New England, and so I've seen him develop. But at the same time, I hadn't seen him start a game, and I hadn't seen him, you know, um, step into that role and play with, with the lights are on and play in four quarters. And so there was still that, you know, there's still that element of, of what, what are you going to do when you get into that situation? And he obviously answered the call against the 49ers. And I think we'll have another opportunity to see him against Kansas City and, uh, you know, see his performance. And, you know, I think it's too early right now to really make a call on, on what his future is, just because it is a hard position to play. But, you know, his opportunity to play in, uh, against Kansas City and that performance, well, you know, obviously that goes into the evaluation process process to see see what we have with him and this week we saw Devonte Adams a leader on this team he was very clear that he quote absolutely wants to be a Raider uh, that it was his dream job to be a Raider before Derek Carr was drafted um, and this season you had three of the top players in the NFL at their position and Max Crosby Devonte Adams and Josh Jacobs you also going forward have Darren Waller Hunter Renfro Chandler Jones all under contract what do you say to Raiders fans who maybe feared that a rebuild or some sort of reorganization could be coming um, just because of Derek Carr not playing, that this could be you and Josh starting to make big changes. Yeah, I mean, we came here to win. And and I think, um, but along with that, like we've said from, from the beginning, anytime you come somewhere new and you're taking over a, a new, uh, taking over an organization or new to the organization, there's an element of, especially in today's NFL of, yes, you want to win now. Um, but there's an, also an element of reconstructing what has been there or what's not there to fit your mold. And so, yes, there's going to be players coming and going. There's going to be um, some painful things that you have to go through because you can't correct every single hole or make every single player acquisition in one year. Uh, I wish you could, but those just aren't the realities of the NFL. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue to, um, you know, find players that that fit 
what we look for um, and continue to build this team in our vision. And I think we're gonna, at the same time, our goal is to win football games. And our, our goal for next year is to make an improvement over where we were this year. This year, we didn't meet the expectations, I think, that uh, we had for ourselves. But again, um, that's part of this process. And so I think Raider Nation should understand that we're here to win football games, first and foremost. And we're gonna also, um, to do that, we're gonna make acquisitions that are gonna help us uh, win in the present. But we're always gonna have a, a, a vision on how do we construct this thing long term because what we don't want to do is just catch lightning in a bottle and, and, and you win for one year and then um, you're, you're digging yourself out of that hole because you maybe weren't financially responsible or you made some you know made some decisions that weren't long-term decisions and so we're always going to weigh both of those things against each other when we make decisions to build this team. An I formation behind him down to five on the play clock, gets the snap, hands off to Jacob, stutters to the right, bursts through the hole, 20, 25, 30, he's off to the races here in Seattle, nobody's gonna catch him, 25, 20, 10, ball game! Bye bye, Josh. This organization didn't pick up Josh Jacobs' fifth year option in, in kind of a great scenario that, hey, when a guy's in that situation, he went out and, and produced uh, rather than be a malcontent. He went out and he led the league in rushing. Uh, how committed is the organization to possibly bringing him back? It is a contract year. He is up now because of the lack of the fifth year option. Yeah, well, it's first, I just very proud of Josh and, and, and what he's done this year. Uh, a lot of the first year is getting to know people and getting to know Josh as, 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 as a player and as a football player, his work ethic, his commitment to winning, his commitment to his own greatness um, are things that you don't know unless you spend time with people. And so that's, that was a really uh, encouraging thing to see this year. And Josh embodies a lot of the qualities um, that we want in our, to, to build this foundation on. He loves football, he's dependable, he's tough, um, and he's a really good football player and he's explosive, which is an important thing too. And so those are the types of players we, that we wanna be Raiders and that we wanna build around. The fabric of our culture will be to evaluate and evolve consistently and constantly our processes and our people to make sure that we are always operating at a championship level. You go into your second year now as the GM about to start it. What is the next step in the evolution of the Raiders as, as we head into this offseason and into 2023? Yeah, I think the first step is along those lines is to kind of critically look back at this past year um, and critically look at the things that we felt didn't go well, decisions that maybe didn't go well, uh, and decisions that went well. We kind of look at the whole picture and kind of have an idea of where did we, where can we improve? And, and I think that's the biggest thing as we go forward is taking self-reflection, um, having some, I'd say, constructive criticism uh, within the building and find solutions. And because everybody can come up with a, a problem and identify a, a problem, but can you identify a solution? And a couple of things that we're doing in scouting right now is looking at this past year's free agency class and this past year's draft and looking where are some of the areas that we could have made better decisions that could have impacted the, the organization possibly in a better way. And I think that overall mindset of looking critically um, and setting ego aside and figuring out ways that we can improve going forward is gonna be a big part of this off season. It's gonna be a big part of every off season that we have. And I think another important part uh, that I learned in New England um, is you have to evaluate your team and you have to be honest in the evaluation of your team and, and understanding where are your strengths, where are your weaknesses, where are some of the different areas that you need to improve the team. And, and that's gonna be a big focus here as we go through January and we go through February as we're leading into free agency and leading to the draft is making sure we're solidifying the things that we're strong on, improving our weaknesses and making great decisions here for the future of the Raiders to um, you know, continue to build this thing the way that we wanna do it. Well, Dave, I know we're excited to see what you do with an entire off season uh, here as it was kind of condensed last year. So congratulations on making it through your first year as a GM. We're looking forward to seeing what the future holds for the Raiders. Appreciate it.